Hey guys, love of the grain workshop here today. Today we're gonna to show you another DIY uh, Shosugi Bond technique that we did on this accent wall here behind me in my dining room. Um, this is German shiplap that we charred. Um, and in the video today, we're gonna to show you how we burnt this, how we sealed it so that you don't get any black rubbing off, um, and then how we installed it. So complete from start to finish. Uh, keep in mind, this is only about a one day project. Once we have all the materials from start to finish on this wall, which is about a, I think about a 14 by 10. So we're gonna show you how to do that. Any point in this video, you really think, hey, this is a cool video, I like it. Be sure to hit that like button below. Make sure you comment about how much you liked it. If you have any questions, I'm always open to answer any questions that anybody asks uh, about how we do these things. Uh, be sure to check out my other DIY videos as well. I've got some other uh, different styles of Shusugi Ban that we did, different techniques, different wood, um, and how to prep them and how to do them and how to use them. And remember, if you did really like this video and my other videos, make sure you subscribe, hit that notification bell so you can be notified every time I make a video. Um, we've got more videos coming up that I'm working on right now, editing. Um, and so I really appreciate all you guys checking us out. Uh, stay tuned as we move on. Hey guys, um, today, so we're gonna do a video, Justin's over here with the pump sprayers. Uh, we're gonna do a video on uh, how to do a accent wall using the Shosugi Ban Japanese uh, technique of charring wood. Um, Shosugi Ban is, stands for charred cedar, basically. Um, we don't, we're not using cedar, we're gonna use pine. Um, you can use cedar or pine. Pine, I like the look of either one, really. Um, you can use either one. Um, cedar is better for application if you're gonna be using it outdoor. We're gonna do an in accent wall indoors, so we're gonna use pine. It's cheaper, uh, better cost effective. Um, anyway, so what you're gonna need is you're gonna need a garden weed torch, which hooks up to a full-size propane tank. Um, I got this one at Harbor Freight. I think it was like $40, uh, maybe $30. You can get them online uh, on Amazon. I'll post a link in the video at the bottom uh, where you can get it on Amazon and get it quick within two days if you got Prime. Um, obviously, you need some lumber from your local hardware store, Lowe's, Home Depot, uh, or Lumber Yard. We're using uh, number two pine. This is actually a shiplap. It's a new, it's called German shiplap. So it's got this groove cut out and then a flush part with the notch on the bottom. So your top piece of your bottom of the next one down will fit right here. And then you'll still have that little kind of neat little alcove or concave in it. Um, so what we're trying to effect, get the effect of is this type of char. There's a couple different kinds I have videos on. You can look online on my other videos and see the styles of Shusugi Ban I've done and the tutorials on how to do them. This one we're going to do, I gotta be careful I don't want to burn myself, this one we're going to do is a light crackle char. So we're tar charring it till it's completely black until you just get a little bit of crackle. Not a super heavy crackle because as a wall inside you don't want to rub it off. Um, once after you clear coat it, it'll be really soft if you get a really heavy burn. Um, but so we're gonna get it till it's just black and just a little bit of crackle here. And then once these cool, we're gonna clear coat them. So to burn it like that, you need to put your set your torch on kind of a lower setting, um, and then have somebody stand by with a standard garden pump sprayer. Um, you can do it yourself, or if you got kids, you can use your kids, like I'm doing. <laughs> Um, to stand by because I'm going to burn a couple feet. I'll show you in the video. I'm going to do it second in a second. Burn a couple feet and then let him pump the sprayer to get it out till it's not smoking anymore so we don't continue to burn the wood. The less you heat it and uh, the uh, quicker you wet it, the less likely these boards are going to warp or cup. Um, since they're only about six inch boards, they don't really cup too bad either way, but um, I'll show you what we're going to do next. Here we go. You don't want to go high, 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 like because that'll burn too fast and too hot and it'll warp the wood. So you just kind of, like a medium, about like that, burning it. And as you go, Just 
like that till you start to get that crackle and then wet it down really fast and really quick to get any flame out and to stop it from charring any further and to cool it down. You want to kind of wet it until it doesn't smoke much at all, if any. Um, if you're outside, you want to do, I mean, obviously you're going to do this outside, um, but you want, I have a couple pallets I picked up somewhere for free to put them on. Um, you can put them on cinder blocks or something. It's just easier with pallets. You can put more on it. Um, just be careful wherever you're doing it, wherever you're doing it outside, the grass around where you burn is going to burn and it's probably not going to grow back for a couple weeks. Um, so be conscious of that where you're doing it and how you're doing it. Um, I assume you could do it on concrete. I've never done it. I'm not sure if it'll char the concrete or not. Be careful. That's your own <laughs> at your own risk at that. Um, I do it on the grass because I know around here we've got so many weeds and tall grass it'll grow back real fast. So uh, let's do a little bit more. down again now if you have some boards that have knots like that one right there then those are pretty heavy with sap um, they will burn they'll take longer to burn I burn them lightly because then you'll have a little bit of a contrast with the black wood and then you'll have that nice dark brown area where the knots are I kind of like that look if you don't you just need to burn them heavier just be careful how much you're burning it as soon as it turns black stop because again that sap burns real hot and it takes a bit to burn through it and so you might end up heating the board a little too much. Um, so just kind of be careful with that, play it as you go. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna burn the rest of these. I've got a few more in the car we're gonna pull out and do. And we'll let them cool down really well with the water, let all the sun bake all the water off um, so they're not wet anymore, and then we'll seal them. Hey guys, okay, so they've been sitting here cooling um, in the sun. All the water's evaporated off of them. Um, so now we can go ahead and clear coat them. Now the technique for this, again, Shosugiban, which is a Japanese technique they've been using for hundreds of years, um, was mainly invented to be used as house siding um, as well as fencing uh, because it helps protect the wood from further fire damage, insects, water, things like that. Normally for an outdoor setting, you would rub a linseed oil, boiled linseed oil or tongue oil or something natural like that on it and let it soak in. For an interior use where, you know, hands are gonna get on it because it's a wall, I got kids and things like that. Um, I'm going to be using in a um, water-based polyurethane. Um, I'll, again, post it in the link. The one I use typically is Minwax Polycrylic. Um, I'm using one by Minwax right now just because it's what I've got on hand, which I put in this jug, which is an oil-modified Minwax Polyurethane. So it's water-based, but it's tinted to give the look of oil. Um, I use that sometimes if I want that kind of natural oily um, look that'll enhance the grain of the wood. In this application, it's not going to really affect it too much, other than maybe on the knots, it'll give it a good look. Um, but again, either oil-based, water-modified, or oil-modified, water-based, um, or just straight, regular, polycrylic, water-based. And again, that'll be in the link that I'm going to use for this type of uh, thing, as well as if you use it on furniture, things like that, uh, that you're going to char, because um, I have done some that way. So I like to use the Minwax Home Right Super Finish Max. Um, to spray it on with you can brush it on you can roll it on um, I prefer to spray it on with this gun this gun is again I'll have it a link in the description where you can get it um, on Amazon um, it's about a hundred dollars it'll pay for itself pretty quickly uh, they have a ten dollar cleaning kit to help clean it out pretty quickly as well real easy to set up real easy to use uh, you've got a couple different tips for depending on what you're spraying you've got an adjustment for a wider heavier spray or a narrower uh, lighter spray I kind of keep it on a medium for this stuff with the smallest bit super simple spray on real quick i'll show you i'm going to do all five of these boards in a couple minutes
and that's how quick and how easy this gun works. Um, there are a few random drops, which I'm going to wipe off with my finger real quick. I didn't have my bowl tight enough, so there was a little gap where it was leaking out as I sprayed it. Um, one thing I should mention when spraying the polycrylic, you definitely want to strain it, um, either using a paint strainer. I use cheesecloth um, that you can pick up at any grocery store. So we'll let that dry. It takes 15, 20 minutes before we can recoat it, and we'll probably put three or four coats on. Okay, so we've got all the boards outside um, off the deck. Uh, we've clear coated all of them, they've dried. Uh, it's now time to put them in. So we're gonna start putting them in at the bottom. Uh, again, it's a German shiplap or a German um, siding. So it works just like a shiplap, basically one over top of the other. So we're gonna start at the bottom. We've taken off all our baseboard and our shoe molding. Um, and we're gonna go straight up this wall. We're gonna cut out where the uh, socket is. There's one plug. Uh, we had some screws up here where a picture was hanging. We took them down um, and we're going to go over, just straight over top of those. I'm going to go all the way to the ceiling. These boards aren't long enough to go the whole length of the wall. So we're going to start at one end, work our way this way with a full length, piece in a shorter piece. Then we'll go over and we'll start with a shorter starter strip on the other end, just like you would when you're doing flooring. Um, so that wherever you, over, wherever you have a seam to making your second piece, you're not gonna have them all in a row all the way up the wall. You wanna stagger as you build it up the wall. So we're gonna go ahead and get our first piece in and then stack go and keep staggering until we get all the way up. Okay, so before we put the boards up though, um, we want to mark where our studs are in the wall. Um, we're gonna use an, a nail gun uh, with trim nails in it um, to put these up. Uh, we'll probably put a little bit of bead of caulk on the backside, but to hold them steady until that sets up, uh, we wanna make sure we know where all our horizontal uh, studs are. So the easiest way to do that is obviously a stud finder. Roll across the wall until you find a stud, mark your center. This one's a nice one. Um, I'll put a link in there for one um, for this kind. Basically, it shows you all along the whole wall uh, where your stud is, rather than just trying to find one spot. And then you can dead center it uh, where it needs to be. So I'll do that here, and then I'll do it a few feet below as well in the same spot. Then take your straight edge, uh, in this case I'm using a large level, lay it on your mark, make sure you're level, and it should line up with your other mark that you make, and then you can go straight down, and you'll know every time, it's kind of hard to see in the, in, on this wall with the light, but that's my line there for the stud, so as I go up, I'll know exactly where I need to put my nail uh, to hit a stud every time uh, so it holds. Wondering what I mean by stagger, this is what it is. So we've got a full length piece at the bottom. It comes to, sorry for the lighting, it comes to right here. And then we cut a strip to fit into the wall further down. Our next piece, rather than doing a full length piece all the way again and having our seam line up in the exact same spot, you want to take a shorter piece. So in this instance, it's always easier to take the piece that you cut, which was a full length piece to fit here, take the leftover and use that as your starter piece on the next part. So we move down and we're gonna put this one since it's shorter up top, which means instead of our seam being over here, again, sorry for the lighting, instead of our seam being over here, our seam will be down here. Then we'll cut a piece to fit that. The piece that we cut to fit that, we're gonna take the leftover and use that as our starter on the next row. So that way, every, every time you move up one, your, your seam is in a different spot. It looks better, it looks cleaner, it doesn't look so plain when it comes to having one single seam all the way up the same spot in the wall. Uh, it's less noticeable. So just like if you're, again, in flooring, you see one seam here, you see one over there, you see one way down there, it's staggered. It's not exactly the same on each one. Um, so that's what you're going to want to do. One of the suggestion is when you're cutting these boards because of the black, sometimes you'll get little chip outs. Make sure you're using a fresh, sharp blade, clean blade, and make sure that you go slow because you don't want to chip any of that out. Now this is chipped out, but it's only chipped out on the top and that bottom strip or the next strip up is going to cover that. So we're, we're, we're not going to see that. You just don't want chips uh, along the edge that you will see.
I hope you guys love this video as much as I did enjoy making it and in making this wall. Hopefully it was super simple and clarified for you so that you knew how to do it uh, yourself to make a really cool accent wall uh, or use this technique in any other circumstance, uh, whether it's furniture or fencing or siding, considering this is technically a siding, you could use this outside. You would need to seal that a little bit differently. Check out my other videos. Uh, to see what kind of techniques we you can use for exterior use um, in different woods and things like that. Thanks so much for watching. Once again, if you liked the video, hit the like button, hit the bell, hit the notification button, uh, and follow us. And be sure to give us a comment uh, on how much you liked it or if you have any other questions, okay? And stay tuned for more videos. Thanks so much, guys.